This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX and welcome to our two-part series on Japanese candlesticks. Now as you all know tonight's class is brought to you by ETX and ETX Capital is a regulated provider and therefore I'm required to give you a risk warning. So let me read that and get it out of the way. Trading in the financial markets can result in the loss of the amount invested. Do not trade with funds that you cannot afford to lose and seek advice if you do not understand the risks. All information is provided in this webinar is for educational purposes only. ETS Capital and the presenter are not financial uh, or investment advisors and we do not recommend any securities or instruments of any kind. Any securities or instruments that are mentioned throughout are cited only for illustrative and educational purposes. Now, for those of you that are joining us on internet promotion and you're not part of the ETX family, we are a fast-growing financial services company based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA, and we are also a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. When you trade with ETX, you can start out using our binary options platform, which is a great way to get familiar with the financial markets because your risk is only the dollar amount you type in the screen. There's no leverage, no margin, and you're simply predicting whether an asset will go up or down. But once you get to understand how the financial markets work a little, you might want to move over to our world-renowned ETX Trader Pro, our online trading platform that allows you to trade spread betting if you're in London, uh, CFDs worldwide as well or as in, in, in Europe, and Forex, you can trade commodities, indices, and stocks on the ETX Pro, and even the new Bitcoin we have now available on our platform. And for those of you who want to move over to the most advanced trading or want professional trading, you can download our ETX MT4 platform, which will give you the most advanced charts and also allow you to add on expert advisors and to, it will help you automate part of your trading. But no matter which type of platform you want to use, what type of trade, just contact our customer support department and they'll get you set up for any type of trading you want to do and make sure that you get accommodated at all times. Now today's class is the first part of a two-part series on candlesticks. <clears throat> and the, the series is broken specifically in half. <coughs> Tonight we're going to talk about candlesticks and understanding how to put them on your charts and what the different types of candlestick positions and formations they are. <clears throat> and the next class we'll talk about strategies and how to use candlesticks to make trading decisions, help you set your stop loss and take profit points, and see trading opportunities. But before you can do all that, you have to understand how to read the candlesticks properly. Now, tonight's class is being recorded, and you'll be able to access a recorded copy of it in about 24 hours by using the same link you used to come to tonight's class. Now, candlesticks are a form of charting developed by the Japanese rice traders in the 17th century. And much later, it came to the Western world around the 20th century, and they've gained in popularity since the development of online trading and computers. Because when I started trading 40 years ago, you know, every all the charting was done by hand. And drawing candlesticks on a chart was very time consuming. So most of us use bar charts. But candlestick charts are still around and there were experts in candlesticks and they swore by them and they were always a very good trading system, except it was just a time consuming thing to do when you were trading by hand. Now, today with the new Java charts and HTML5 charts, you don't have to do anything. You just click a button and you have your candlesticks. And that's the downside sometimes of candlesticks because too many novice traders come into the market and simply think that by looking at the reds and the greens on a chart, they're able to tell what an asset will do. But the fact is candlesticks have very little to do with the number of red and green candles we see on a chart. It's got to do with the size and the shape of the candle, where it sits in the position, and what it's saying relative to the previous candle and the 
preceding candle. And this is very important. You have to learn how to recognize these patterns and positions and the shape and the size of the candle, which we're going to talk about tonight. So each candlestick represents a data set of the complete price action during the selected time frame. So in other words, if you're using a 15-minute chart, every 15 minutes a candlestick would put on a chart covering the open, the high, the low, and the close. If you're using a one-day chart, the beginning of the day and the end of the day would be denoted with the open and the close and the high and the low for that day. And we draw the candlestick just like we see here on the chart. So this is a, a one-hour candlestick, but to be honest with you, it doesn't look any different than a one-day candlestick or a 15-minute ca candlestick. Okay. We draw a line across at the opening or the beginning of that time frame, that time session. Then we draw a line across at the close of that time session. So if you're dealing with a 15-minute candle, you know, you draw the candlestick, the, the, the line on the chart at the open, and then 15 minutes later, you would draw the line on the chart at the close. If you're dealing with a one-hour chart, we would be using one hour. Then we put a dot at the highest point that that, can, that price met during that period and a, and a dot where the lowest price was. We connect these dots to the, can, to the lines we drew for the open and the close. We then draw the body of the candle, which is simply connecting the open and the close together. If the price moved up from the open to the close, we would draw it in what's called what we'd be using for our bullish color. Now, in the old days, we used black and white. Today, we use not predominantly reds and greens. Green saying bullish, red saying bearish. But if you want to use candlesticks and make them pink and purple, as long as you remember which was bearish and which was bullish, you're perfectly fine. You could use yellow and orange. You could do, do side whatever you want. It's your chart. You decide. But in the standard format, we use greens and reds or blacks and whites. So if we stepped up from the open to the close, we would fill in that candlestick with, in this case, the green. If we step down from the open to the close, we would fill it in with red. Now, what we end up having here is the body of the candle, which is the area we filled in between the open and the close. And we have what's known as wicks or shadows, which is the wick that we drew between the body and the high and the body and the low. Now, that's not difficult. It's easy. It's just like a bar chart, except we have the body of the candlestick built in as opposed to the bar. So it covers the open, the high, the low, and the close for that period. Now, I just want to get some of these markings off there. This candlestick formation and the shadows up above tell us a story and we have to be able to read the story to understand how the markets are moving because the size and the shape of the candle do tell us something of importance as you know the markets are always about the fight of the bulls and the bears so candles will all fall into one of six classifications that tell us the story that's going on. So we can see in the first candle, and I'm going to use either, I'm going to talk about uh, tug of war, you know, the, the pulling of two teams pulling a rope, or a football game. Because this is what it is. We have this tug of war, or this, this football game between two teams. And it's, these are called the bulls and the bears. And they're constantly competing. So. In the first candle formation, we would have, in this case, a white candle, and we have two semi-equal wicks on either side. They could be a little bit longer or shorter than the others, and we have a fairly decent-sized candle. It doesn't matter how much it doesn't matter how much price it's covering. 
In this case, we have a white candle, or if you're using a green-red system, a green candle. Okay. That story is telling you that the bulls controlled the ball, or the bull team pulled the rope farther in that session and had control of that session. Okay. So the long white candlestick indicates that the bulls controlled the ball for most of the game because you can see the open was down below. It closed higher. The bears were at some point be able to pull it down to get a little bit lower low to form that wick. The bulls actually pulled it up a little bit higher, but weren't able to hold that high. Number two is the exact opposite. And the long back candlestick indicates the bears controlled the ball for most of the game. And when you understand what this game is and who's controlling it, you can understand the price action during that period. Now we get a little bit more information. In number three, we have a fairly small body of a candle. We have equally sized wicks above and below. And what this is telling us is that nobody controlled the game. Neither team was in control. And neither team made any strong statement. In number four, we still have the same thing. The open and the close were relatively close. But at some point, the bears were able to pull the market down, but they lost control because it closed basically fairly close to where it opened. And number five is the exact opposite. The bulls were able to shoot up but weren't able to hold on. And ended up where they were. So imagine we have a tug of war. Bulls on one side of the river, bears on the other pulling the, thread, the, the rope through. Well, at some point, the bulls yanked that rope really hard and pulled all the, half the team from the other side into the water. But those guys that got wet got really upset, and they were able to yank back out of the water, yank them all in, and pull everybody back, and they all ended up exactly where they were, or fairly close to where they were. So... For a minute, the Bulls had some domination, but they weren't able to hold on, and they ended up where they were. Then we also have six, where it shows both. There was some market volatility, Bulls pulling, Bears pulling, but they still ended up where they were. Okay. So this is a general story that we can tell from the body, shape, and size, and the color of the candle and the wicks. But don't get yourself lost in the psychological response to a group of reds or greens. Too many traders look at this and see four candles in a row in green and say, oh, look at that. I should be trading it to go up. That's not it. So don't let your mind sway you. Now, we start to come to some very distinct candle shapes. Okay. The first one, and when, even though they tell the story, each one of these shapes are more important than just the story. They are denoting something is about to happen in the markets. So the first one we look at is the Marabuzu. It is a fairly common candle that happens, but when you see it, you need to know that you should be making a trading decision. A marabuzu, as you see on the right-hand side, what do you see about this candlestick that was different than anything we looked at in that storyline? A marabuzu has no wicks. What that tells you is in the bullish marabuzu, the green, the minute the mar that, that time period opened, the bulls were in control, and they never eased up one drop, and they closed at the highest point. Well, that's telling you the bulls are in control of the market, the buyers. And when that time period or that time frame ended, they were still in control. So that's telling you most likely that next frame is going to continue in a bullish format. It's the exact opposite when you see it in red. Now, you can see it in black and white also. 
but as you can see, these candles are without wicks, and depending on whether the candle is green or red, it's very bullish or very bearish. The green marabuzu shows that the price pushed up after the open. It closed at the highest point. Okay. Even more potent long candlesticks are the marabuzu brothers, black and white. Marabuzus do not have upper or lower shadows. A white marabuzu forms up, opens equal the low and the close. This indicates that the buyers controlled the price action. When now it's always important with candlesticks to look at them in relationship to the current price action or the trend. When a marabuzo appears in a middle of a sideways action or a downtrend, and we get a bullish marabuzo. That is telling us that that downtrend or that sideways action is now ending and it's beginning the beginnings of a very strong uptrend. When we see it appear in a consolidation or at the end of a uptrend and we see a bearish marabuzu, it's telling us that a very strong downtrend is about to begin. Next we get spinning tops. Spinning tops are like the story we told in, in the, the bulls and the bears when we have equally distant highs and lows but a body that showed very little movement between the open and the close. Now they've pushed up, pushed down, but the, the, very, the difference between the open and the close are very, very small. This is telling you neither buyers nor sellers could gain the upper hand and the result was a standoff. Now, it's important, again, to look at where it appears in the trend. So after a long advance, okay, if, you're, if these appear in the middle of an uptrend or a downtrend, especially a solid trend, that's telling us that one of two things are going to happen. Now, of course, the market's either going to continue up or continue down. But it's telling you when we see one of these that the markets are taking a breather. And there's some indecisiveness happening, telling us that we should wait for the next candlestick to see what the buyers and sellers have decided. Now, we come now to one that you hear about all the time, and it's called the doji. The doji is a candlestick that the open and the close were virtually the same. Now, in stocks or commodities, it should be exactly the same. Forex, because Forex trades in pips that are small, such small increments, if it's a pip or two apart, it is fine, but they should be pretty much at the same level. So you can see it forms a cross or a pretty much of a small cross. So dojis convey a sense of indecision or tug of war between the buyers and sellers. Price moves above and below the opening level during the session, but close at near the opening level. The result is an ultimate standoff. Different securities have different criteria for dojis, which I just explained to you. But we want to look at the doji in relationship to the trend. The relevance of a doji depends on the preceding trend or preceding candlesticks. After an advance or a long white candlestick, a doji signals the buying pressure is starting to weaken. After a decline and a long black or a long black candlestick, it's telling us just the opposite. So you have to be able, you don't have to remember all these types, you don't have to remember all these explanations. You have to know when you see these that they're trying to tell you something. So you have to be able to recognize a Candlestick, whether it's a doji, whether it's a marabuzu, whether it's a spinning top. Not because you don't have to say, oh, that's what the guy called a marabuzu. You don't have to remember the word marabuzu. You have to remember when I see a candlestick, there's no wicks. It's specifically telling me something. Now, what's the key with doji is that neither the bulls nor the bears have gained control and the price has ended up where it began. It's a sign of indecision in the markets. But you have to apply doji candlesticks. So a good trick is to look out for doji near the edge of the price channel. So if it appears in a well-developed uptrend or downtrend, 
we want to see where it has developed and it is most likely telling us that it is the end. So we see here in this downtrend, remember markets moving, push and ease, push and ease. So we see prices moving up towards the upper trend line, a good validated trend line, and we saw the doji appear. So that's telling us it's not going to have the momentum to break through. And it might give us a chance to, to know that, that it's going to return back to this downtrend. So we want to keep in mind where, where the doji appears. But the dojis appear often, so they're, they're not, therefore, a reliable trading signal. They're a trading alert, let's say. And you have all types of dojis. You have dragonflies and gravestones. That's with long, long, long ends. You also have long-legged ones, and they have all kinds of weird names. Basically, you're looking for a candlestick where the open and the close were virtually the same. Now, before turning to single and multiple candlestick patterns, there's a few general rules I want to cover. Okay. Now that you have the basic idea of what a candlestick indicates with their bodies and wicks, let's cut our teeth on some uncomplicated candlestick patterns. These are fairly common and quite likely to appear for you in a normal trading session. So knowing instantly what they mean and taking the proper trading decision immediately could make the difference between a winning and a losing trade. So there are some of these positions. Now, a position is different than a pattern, and it's different than a candlestick. It is what we see in or where the, the candle is positioned in relationship to the previous candle. Star patterns are one of the ones that you can look for. I pay no attention to star patterns. Star pattern is simply a candlestick that appears after a previous candlestick that looks like it's a star above or a falling star. Okay. There's lots of these that have all types of names. Okay. And then they fall into all combinations of shooting stars, spinning tops, hammers, hanging men. A lot of these don't mean anything to me. It's when you see the names don't mean anything. It's when you see a particular pattern. So we have shooting stars, we have inverted hammers. Okay. When they appear, they're telling you that most likely the current trend is about to end. And again, you're looking at them in relationship to the trend. It's simply a normal body candle or a smaller body candle with a long wick up or down, depending on where, where it's appearing, and it's red or green. Okay. A hammer is a green candle towards the end of a downtrend with a small body and a long downward shadow implying fear for, of the downside. Where a hanging man, it's the end of an uptrend. Okay. And so they've given them all kinds of odd names. Now, my favorite of all these is called the Harami. Harami in Japanese means pregnant. Now, I use Haramis a lot. I trade from them, but I've tightened the interpretation down close. A Harami is when a candlestick appears after a normal, regular body candlestick, and the new candlestick is fully contained within the body of the previous candlestick. Just like a pregnant woman has the body fully enclosed in within her body. So in this case, here we have the previous candlestick. And in this case, it was a bullish candlestick. And the next candlestick appears. And it is fully incorporated in the, the body of the previous candle. I use a very strict interpretation saying that the next candlestick has to also be the opposite color of the previous candlestick. So you're looking for it to be fully contained within that body. And it's called a harami. Now, it appears quite often. You'd be surprised how often they appear. The harami is one of the most common candlestick patterns you'll come across. So it's important to recognize it, to understand what it means, and to understand its limitations. A harami is a two-session reversal pattern. 
It's made up of two candlesticks and applies that the price is about to turn. It is indicated by a small body of the opposite color, completely contained by the body of the previous session. It is now, here's where we differ a great deal. It is not essential for the two candles to be opposite colors, but this tends to give it a more reliable signal. I only use it when it is the opposite color. So here you can see that a small black candle is completely within the confines of the previous white candle. This indicates that the upward trend is running out of steam. So this bullish harami shows that the sellers beginning to dominate as they come back to the markets. The, the bearish harami in the bottom has a shadow that extends beyond the body of the previous candle. Some traders wouldn't regard this as a true harami. I do not. I fully, I mean, I use the finest definition. Just like if you had a pregnant woman, you wouldn't have the baby's body extruding outside of her body. So, but it is a reversal candle when you see it in the opposite direction. Now, I'll be blunt with you. A harami doesn't always live up to its height. While it is touted to be a reversal indicator, you may find yourself disappointed by its reliability. The psychology behind a harami is that a possible change in sentiment may be happening. A small candle does not necessarily mean a strong reversal is coming. Often with a harami pattern, several days of tight range or consolidation. So be aware of Haramis and watch for what they are telling you about market sentiment, but don't have blind faith in them. And you should have blind faith in anything. You need to combine it with other indicators. And a Harami, when it appears, if you can look at it in relationship to where it's appearing in the trend, is a very good trend reversal signal. So what have we learned so far? We've learned about building a candlestick on a chart, Understanding and reading the candlestick, the explanation of candlestick shapes and sizes, formation of candlesticks, positions. We talked about dojis, haramis, tops and shadows. Shadows are the candle, the, the wicks, bulls versus the bears, hammers and hanging men. So now it's time to learn about the multi candlestick patterns. Now, the, we have, so what we've talked about mostly so far are what we call single candlestick or standalone candlesticks, one candle. Okay. The chart that I've got up there, I didn't develop it. It's a standard chart, but they known them long, named them to be cute, lonesome cowboys. So that was the Marabuza spinning top, the doji, the hammer, the hanging man, inverted hammer, shooting star. Then we go to the double signals. This, is two, this requires the combination of two candlesticks. These are the two different candlesticks when they're next to each other. So we have bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, bullish tweezers, and bearish tweezers. Now, I've given you the handouts, and there are 16 important shapes. You can see these on those handouts I've given you. And bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing are patterns that appear that are quite prevalent, but they are very good indicators. Again, you have to look at them when they are developed in a trend. What you see in a bullish engulfing is you see a bullish, a bearish candle that would appear in a downtrend. Okay? Normal candle. When the next candle next to it becomes a very large candle in the opposite color, so you're getting a bearish candle after a bullish can, a, a, you're getting a bullish candle after a bearish candle in a downtrend, that is telling you that the bulls are taking control of the markets. And in this case, the example we have here is also a harami, which is another indicator that is a very strong move. In the chart on the right, we see in an uptrend, we had a green candle, and then next to it we had a red candle, and the red, the, the green or the red must be much larger than the previous candle in the move of the trend. And again, here is telling us that the bears took full control of the markets, and 
we're moving into a downtrend. Then bullish tweezers don't appear, or and bearish tweezers don't appear often. But they appear as two candlesticks that appear next to them in opposite colors that have no tops that and have very long bottoms because they look exactly like tweezers. So they have no highs and they have very long lows. And they have equi-sized bodies. Okay. That is telling you that the current trend is now over and it is fully reversed into the opposite trend direction. We also have, so we have bearish tweezers and bullish tweezers. But again, the rules are very strict. The bodies have to be equal size and you have to have the formation in a bearish tweezer of strong pushes, strong highs, where in bullish tweezers, strong lows. So then we have morning stars and evening stars, which are complicated candles which don't appear often and don't really have no reliability. But then we go to the triples. And the triples are very important when they appear because this is a combination of three candles and three white soldiers and three black crows basically are kicking you in the butt and telling you something okay three black three white soldiers and again you don't have to remember these funny names that have been given to them i didn't give them but okay three white soldiers and these come from back in the days where we use black and white so they could be three green soldiers if you want to call them that but there are th they appear in a downtrend and we get three candles moving in the opposite direction that is telling you that down that downtrend is fully reversed and you can read some books on three soldiers there are some very precise calculations like each candle must be bigger than a previous candle and moved up from that candle by a certain amount and you can use this to actually figure out where you should put your entry points and your exit points but it, you need to read and learn the fine definitions of these candles. But just seeing the shape or the pattern, you can make the decision. It is a bullish reversal pattern. It's a trio of long green candles during a downtrend, each appearing after the other, opening with the range of the previous period and closing near the current period's end. It's telling that trend is over and we're moving into the reverse trend. Three black crows is just the actual exact opposite that appears at the end of an uptrend. And of course, there are three bullish, three bearish moves. Then we have the three upside, three inside up and three inside, ups, inside down. I'm not going to spend any time on these because they are just a weird conglomeration of three patterns that are very hard to recognize very hard to see in the charts and don't happen often. But three inside up, as shown in, the, in the, this chart, appear in a downtrend and the first candle is a tall red one. In other words, we're in a downtrend and we're getting a long candle in the movement of the current trend. Followed by a small green candle, which must be nestled within the range of the previous body. And the last candle is a tall green one that pushes out above the close of the previous small green's close. And again, it's telling us we have a full end of that downtrend and move to an uptrend. And we have the exact reverse for a ending of an uptrend moving to a downtrend. So, we talked about a lot of stuff here. I've given you the handouts because there are 16 different patterns that you have to know. So now when we have gone through the various candlestick patterns, either you're going to be ready to start trading with your newly acquired, acquired knowledge or you're going to be screaming, stop it. I am too confused with all these funny names and shapes and can't remember them. And I could spend all day looking at one chart with one asset. So before you freak out, and you can practice this before we come to next week's session, because next week's session, we're going to be actually learning how to read these on regular 
actually putting, incorporating them into your trading strategy and determining how to set stop loss and take profit points and where you get the actual entry signal to make a trade. So, so remember, each candle of a candlestick chart is a reflection of market sentiment. It's not just the standard patterns, but with a keen observation, you can master the art of trading by looking at the charts without even remembering the names of these patterns. So let me pop up a live chart here for you. Okay. And let me get up on your screen. I've got the Euro US dollar set up. Now we're looking at a bar chart. Okay. Current chart for the Euro US dollar in a one hour time frame. Okay, first of all, life is easy. All we do is click on candlesticks and look at that. We've got them the standard reds and greens. Okay. And a one hour chart. That's just what I got up here, for example. Now, you can. Uh oh. Change your colors. Okay, you can go, you know, any of the systems will allow you to do whatever you want to do. So, again, I told you, if you want to use purple and pink, use purple and pink. Okay. But you can set, you know, how dark you want your, 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 your wicks, you know, what, you know, what your background, what your borders, you know, it's all of it's not important. But we have the candlesticks on the chart. But today, there are lots of systems that will help you see the patterns when they develop. Because look, a pattern is really an explanation or a position is an explanation. It's a calculate. Now, you know, computers are so smart. Somebody can program all the ways to look for, you know, three white candles, three white soldiers, or three black crows, and the system can pick it out. So there's lots of places like investing.com. Just click on their candlestick patterns. You can tell them what candlesticks, and it'll chart all and notify you when any of the assets you're looking at are forming a candlestick pattern or completed a pattern. Here on tradingview.com, I can go up here to indicators and just look at my scripts or look and then look at the public library and find candlestick patterns identified. Click on it and look at that. I mean, it's a lot, it's blinding my eyes, but it's now put on here all the different candlestick patterns as they're appearing. Now, granted, we can go up here and set it up. So you can decide which are the important candles, which ones you want to see, what colors you want to see, and how you want them located on your charts. You know, do you want just dots? Do you want just diamonds? Do you want to get rid of all this mess? Do you want to get rid of all these bright colors that are blaring your eyes? And just make them black and white, or just make them orange, and it will. It you know you can set them up, and then it'll appear on your charts. So like I said, Doji's I don't pay that much attention. Evening stars and morning stars I don't pay attention to. Shooting stars I don't pay attention to. Hammers I don't pay. Invert hammers I don't. Bearish haramis, bullish haramis, bearish engulfing bearish. Piercing lines I don't pay any attention to. Bullish belts and bullish kickers I don't pay any attention to. Hanging man, I don't pay any attention to. Dark cloud cover, I don't pay. So now I've got rid of most of them anyway, and I've limited down to just, and you can see how often these are. But as you can see, this makes your life easy. You don't have to spend your life staring and looking at these patterns. They'll pop up on your charts. You just have to know what you're looking for when you see them and what they're trying to tell you. So when we saw this bullish engulfing signal or here we have no here's times we have a bullish harami we had a bullish engulfing here we had a bearish engulfing so what happened we had the bearish engulfing and it moved down we could have traded that segment going down then we got a bullish harami and a bullish engulfing, and we could have traded the segment to go up. Okay. And again, depending on what time frames, and you can set all this to fit your needs. And once you got them set up, you don't have to set them up any longer. And you can just click through all the assets. So there's just ways, but you have to know what, when these appear, what you what it's trying to tell you. You don't have time to go researching them and figuring them out. So you have to learn those 16 patterns. Because, like I said, those 16 patterns also will be used to set stop losses and, and entry points. And you need to be able to recognize them and how to calculate with them where the, you would enter the trade and what point you would want to 
exit that trade. So that is for next week's class. So you have to spend a couple, a little bit of time learning these patterns. Go play with the charts. Go on tradingview.com or the charts on our Trader Pro will also, you know, have candlesticks and you can use the indicators on there. Start getting familiar with with indicators. You know, stop looking at the reds and the greens. Look at the bodies, the shapes, and the positions of the candles. Look at the uptrends and downtrends and see how they appear in the uptrends and downtrends and start to see the relationships in the price movement next to each other. Okay, real fast. What do you see here? What would you call this? One, two, three movements up. And actually, it's, it's five green candles. So we had green, green, green. We could have entered the market here and traded that short-term trade up to here in a two-hour position. Okay. But what is that trade? Okay. That was what? A three white soldiers. Okay. So when they appear, they're very good. Here we have, again, because once you have the three, you're going to be trading. So you're not waiting for the five or the six. You're going to be entering when you have the third chart pattern developing. Okay. So, guys, on that note, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Start reading your, your chart. Start looking at your chart. Start to recognize the patterns. Start learning what the patterns are trying to tell you. And get ready for next week's class. Have a great week. And if you miss next week's class, we're doing it on Wednesday and then the following Sunday, I believe. So great. Thank you very much. And have a great trading week. And thank you for being part of ETX. Night now.